Hi, this is Andip Jali, Karan Sud and Manos Perlakis, presenting case 283 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of a jailed LAD CTO. The LAD had been jailed by a previously placed stent into the diagram. The patient also had a previous inferior MI and PCI of the RCA, uh, multiple comorbidities, LAD CTO with anterior ischemia, and had a previously failed undergrade attempt for decanalizing the LAD CTO. This is the coronary angiogram. We do see the stand that goes from the LAD into the diagonal branch, which is fairly sizable. The exact course of the LAD is unclear. In this view, it appears that the LAD may be coming um, through the stent, and then the CTO might be a very short one. However, as we found later on, this was not an accurate representation of what was actually going on. And we can see it here as well. There, there is not really quite a line up of this branch with the LAD that is filling retrogradely. So essentially, probably the LAD is occluded somewhere in this segment and it's unclear where the proximal cap is, and there's also a stand there. So how to approach this? We have an LED with a bland, ambiguous proximal cap. The length seems to be about 30 millimeters, so fairly long. The distal vessel is diffusely diseased and fills mainly through septal collaterals from the right coronary artery. So our plan was to go retrograde to resolve the proximal cap ambiguity, and if that didn't work, potentially try undergradely to resolve the ambiguity. When the patient came to the cath lab, we did some additional attempts to determine whether we might understand where the proximal cap is. We inserted wire into this branch. We tried to do intravascular ultrasound. We did use a dual lumen microcatheter, but clearly this was not connected. So, we decided to switch to the retrograde approach. We did have multiple septals. We used the careful microcatheter along with the SUO3 guide wire. That did not work, but then we exchanged this for a Sion Black guide wire. And after surfing several branches, the wire seemed to advance along the course of the vessel. Sometimes it can take several attempts. We can see here the wire taking different branches. Um, it seems to be going in the wrong direction to distally. It is pulled back. There's some knuckling. And then it finds a different pathway. And now it seems to be going along the course of the vessel. This is the view. And now this confirms that actually the LAD, it's a little further out than what that previously branch was located at. But the problem we had here is we could not advance the careful microcatheter all the way to the LAD to give us more power to try to puncture retrograde. We tried to use the retrograde guide wire as a marker for an undergrade wire to go through. However, this was a blunt occlusion and we could not redirect the guy next wire to track along the retrograde wire. What we ended up doing is uh, find ways to deliver a microcatheter. The first step is we used a, a guide extension. So this is a six friends guide liner coast advanced uh, into the right coronary artery. And then we changed from a Caravel to a Corsair microcatheter. And we have seen this several times where the larger microcatheter, Corsair in this case, may paradoxically deliver more easily than a thinner microcatheter through the subseptal collaterals. So using the combination of guide extension support as well as a different microcatheter, we were able to advance the Corsair all the way to the LED. But the next challenge was fairly significant. We were unable to puncture through the previously stand, previously placed stand from the LED in the diagonal. The wires just kept on going around the stand and close to the aortic root. We tried with various penetrating wires, guy next two, guy next three, horned wire, but we could not puncture into the stand. And this is where things might fail. And actually, we were close to quitting at this point after trying for several minutes with various guide wires. We also used uh, a balloon from the LED to the diagonal, trying to expand as much as possible the previously placed stand, but the retrograde wire kept on sliding, sliding outside the previous stand. But eventually, after multiple attempts and redirections, 
we were able to find a different pathway and the wire now seems to enter into the aorta. When going retrograde into LADCTOs, it is critical to understand where the wire is actually re-entering into the true lumen. Because what happens is that if the wire enters too proximal, it could compromise the left main and the circumflex. So we're pulling back now from the diagonal. We do see the struts from the previously placed stents. As we're coming back, now the more proximal part of the vessel. And uh, there is the wire coming inside. So the re-entry point is here. And this is the left main. So essentially the wire re-enters into the LAD distal to the left main bifurcation. And this is very reassuring because if the wire was re-entering at the left main, we could lose the circumflex. We had similar difficulties advancing a microcatheter all the way into the um, undergrade kite catheter. But eventually we were able to advance a fine cross M3 Low-profile microcatheter was advanced all the way into the undergrade guide, and then we externalized an R350 wire. We then used a Sasuke dual loop microcatheter to try to wire into the lady, but um, the wire we used somehow seemed to be into the extra plug space, so we had to use reentry. We did use the Stingray system, double blind stick and swap, and that seemed to advance in the right location. We predilated. We stand it with two drag eluting stands, and um, this provided a nice result. Essentially, we have um, flow coming all the way from the proximal LAD, just distal to the bifurcation, all the way to the distal LAD. We did not affect flow into the diagonal branch. Intravascular ultrasound. Um, there was potentially a small hematoma into the left main, but uh, overall, the vessel looked pretty good. So several lessons from this case. The first one is when we have a CTO with a proximal cap that is jailed by a stand placed into a side branch, this can make undergrade wiring extremely challenging or impossible. And retrograde is important, first of all, to understand where the vessel comes from. In this case, there was a misunderstanding. We thought the vessel might be a continuation of the septal branch, but the reality was that the LAD was taking a completely different course. Second challenge, we went retrograde. Wire went, but microcaster could not follow. And there are several steps we can take from that. What we did in this particular case is use a guide extension, as well as a different microcatheter. We did use a larger microcatheter, a Corsair, instead of Caravel, and that helped track retrogradely. The other challenge was puncturing retrogradely into the stents that had been placed into the, into the diagonal. This was very challenging. It took several attempts, but eventually was successful using a guy on X3. Fourth component and that's extremely important. It is about the location of re-entry. If our re-entry was more proximal into the left main, and then we place the stand, we run the risk of occluding the circumflex and the diagonal. But we used intravascular ultrasound. We confirmed that the re-entry point was distal to the left main bifurcation. And this way, we did not have issues with patency of the vessels after we placed stands into the LAD. And finally, we had an additional layer of complexity. Once we cross retrograde, you used a dual lumen microcatheter to advance a wire into the LAD. Unfortunately, the wire went into the extra plug space, requiring re-entry using the Stingray system. Thank you.